Hello. This video will make most sense if you watch some of my previous material on the Sony range of PCM digital audio decoders, which are typically used with domestic beta tapes, Betamax if you like. And actually the music at the end of all my videos comes from a beta PCM encoded tape, which a customer kindly allowed me to use on my channel. That's unreleased music from a recording studio, which sounds great and gives my channel a unique sound as I didn't have to rely on the usual YouTube music library. Anyhow, you will have seen on a previous video how I have an example of a quite rare PCM F1 decoder which was used for recording and playback of digital audio on beta tapes. I've also shown you the even rarer PCM 701 ES unit, a highly respected machine. Then there was the PCM501 model which came out a little bit later and though it may have had slightly cheaper digital audio converters, DACs, um, it did have an extra feature, an extra control for getting the very best results from various recordings. But what all these models lacked was any way of getting a digital audio off the tape in a purely digital way. So you could record that um, losslessly, uh, making a digital clone of the tape contents uh, on modern uh, digital audio recording equipment. So in a previous video, uh, you've seen me repair a problematic third-party aftermarket board which I had, which allowed digital audio to be extracted and the installation of that into the PCM501 ES. Also I discussed how to deal with a difficulty caused by a treble boost on the recordings that's known as pre-emphasis. So that's the whole subject wrapped up then, is it? Well, more or less, there was another model uh, from Sony called the PCM601 ESD and this had dig uh, digital output and in fact a digital input as well uh, installed by Sony. But these models are completely unobtainable. The occasional photo appears online of the PCM601 ESD model, but they never actually seem to appear in the flesh. I come to the conclusion that they never have been, may have been sold in the UK at all. You know what's coming, don't you? What a find! It really exists! The PCM601 ESD. This is the one with the digital inputs and outputs on the back. So that's an SPDIF output there. So we can connect that to a modern digital audio recorder and get a pure lossless copy of the contents from the tapes. So let's start by putting it through its paces. We'll play a test tape uh, on the Sony SLC9. This is chosen because it has the PCM switch at the back, which disables a dropout compensator in the video recorder for the best error correction performance. The presence of this switch in certain Betamax models was probably the main reason that Betamax was nearly always used for this format and not any uh, <clears throat> lesser format. So we get a good tracking signal and good audio. But most importantly, when connected to the digital audio recorder, we can get a pure lossless digital recording from the SPDIF output uh, from this 601 model. Now, for some inexplicable reason, this feature can be switched off. Instructions don't explain why anyone would want to switch this off, even when not in use. But I'm guessing it's probably uh, because of some possibility of digital noise appearing on the analog outputs. The 601 model is very similar to the 501, which we've looked at earlier when I installed the digital output board. So let's take a look to see what's different, and in particular, let's see if we can learn anything about how Sony implemented the digital output connection. Looking at the service manual for the PCM601 ESD, uh, it uses a CX23033 transmitter chip with a phase lock loop. Uh, in the SPDIF output circuit, whereas the third party used a CS8402A transmitter chip and a phase lock loop as well. So actually the two solutions are quite similar. The third party one though does not have the copy protect signal wired up, which is a bonus. And if ever I get tape when playing on the 601 paired up with my Tascam digital audio recorder that will not allow me to copy it, I will look into disconnecting that feature. Let's take a look inside. OK, I've lifted the lid, but just before we delve too much inside the 601, let's have a look at a couple of things. There is the all-important digital out socket here with, strangely, an on-off switch. And there's digital in, so you could record directly from something like a CD player. Also. I just wanted to show you the serial number and the lid I've removed. I don't know if you can see that. 500588. So, a very low serial number, I suspect it's number 588. 
and it's likely I think that the numbers of these things ever built was very small indeed. There's not a lot to see on this digital output socket. I can see there's an IC in there and a few other components. I don't want to disturb this and take it off. But the real um, electronics behind it, I believe in there there's just a buffer. The, the real electronics is on the lower of these two boards. So on the 501 model, they have one PCB here with a metal screening pan. And here on the 601, they have two boards, one mounted above the other. And interestingly, they've made it so you can take the pair off together because they've put screw holes in in the top PCB so you could lift the whole pair out as opposed to one at a time, which maybe it's necessary for servicing. Now, you have to say that the quality is top notch. It's good quality components, very high quality components. It must have been a really expensive piece of kit. But I do wonder if the design's a bit marginal. There's a ceramic IC here with heat sinks glued to the top. I don't know why, but I believe that also exists somewhere in the 501 model. Now, they describe this as, I think, the digital panel on the top and the digital I.O. underneath. And that's not strictly true because I've already looked at the service diagrams and some of the circuitry that's on that lower panel is on the only panel that's fitted in the 501. So they've split some of the circuitry up, maybe because of lack of space or because of screening issues. But anyhow... Let's uh, take this top board off and have a look at the one underneath. Sorry, I don't know. They do use some rather odd screws here. These are, they have a captive copper and thick washer on there. So here we go, what we're going to see behind here. This is the digital I.O. board. This is the CX2, is it 23033, which is the, so that's the digital output for the SPDIF. And somewhere here will be the phase lock loop. Not sure where. maybe this section here. Now, the service manual says you've got to be very careful to make sure these cables are dressed away from this area. There's a clue for reasons of noise pickup. So it may be slightly marginal. So we'll make sure that none of these cables go anywhere near that when we reassemble it. All top quality components again. Though I don't like to see quite so many capacitors. There's a relay here, and I'm sure that exists on the main digital board of the 501. You hear it click when you switch the unit on. So uh, let's carefully reassemble that. So this is extremely rare. This board, you know, they, they could only have made probably, I'm guessing they only ever made maybe one or two thousand ever. Very small volumes for Sony. And in my humble opinion, the digital output option. It should never have been an option. I believe that the, the 501 should have been built with that from the start as standard with, with every machine. Okay, they're trying to keep costs down, but uh, they really um, limited its abilities. Now, I already have the PCM501 ES, which has a digital output connector and a Sony C9 player, and I have the digital audio recorder here. So why now, you may ask, do I need the 601, which also has a digital output connector, and here I have another C9. Well, it's so that sometimes uh, when I get large quantities of tapes in, I can now run two tapes at once. So here we have the uh, second C9.
and we can see there nice strong tracking signal OVC control is, is green it will occasionally flash it does say that that's normal but generally it's very good it's nice solid result and that's the uh, meters operating in normal VU mode it all works beautifully emphasis is on this this is a uh, obviously using headphones so that's uh, got analog de-emphasis but if I was have this connected to a digital recorder then I would do the de-emphasis uh, in the digital domain. Well I hope uh, looking inside the 601 has been interesting to you. Uh, please remember to like, share and especially subscribe so I'll do more content on audio and video technology in the future. Um, before I say bye for now do listen to my outro which includes music which came from one of these PCM decoder tapes. Bye for now. Thank you.